How satisfying is that? We, we've orientated the solar panels with an uncalibrated, an uncalibrated spat. How amazing! I will make sure this will be calibrated later. But at the moment, we haven't got time. The shadow is coming. Okay, so we have now connected to our solar panels in series. If I manage to... 65 volts, we have DC. This should be perfect for our inverter. There are 220 and 215 watt panels in series now. It's, it's a serious connection, right? And of course now here with the terminals we need to use the resistor to pre-charge the capacitors inside the inverter. Spark, it's a tiny bit, and then we are good to connect. Okay, so this is our DC input. I have prepared everything else now. We have our load here, our house simulated. And this is the meter we have, and then this all plugs into the Sonoff, which is turned on, and an RCD as a safety switch in between. Okay, let's plug in the inverter and see what we have. What we get? 65 volts, 237, and we won't see anything at the moment. Minus 4, it says. Well, I have not plugged in the limiter yet which I will do right now. Okay, and this should show us the load of the house at the moment. I think we've got around 100 and, yeah, 120 watts is usually my standby on this phase. So this is a real world scenario now of an unoccupied house at the moment. My wife is working in the garden, I'm here in the garage. This is all standby on 50% of the house now. It's 120 watt and the inverter will easily cope providing this energy now from these two solar panels. So we are feeding energy from these solar panels directly into the house without a battery in between. Okay, now we will fire up Miss Piggy with about 300 watts and see how the inverter reacts to that. We are now pulling from the grid. Ah, 180, you know what? We have a limit programmed of 180 watts. So if I get rid of the limit, 340 watts we need to compensate for the house and Miss Piggy. And now the inverter is doing MPPT to find out what the maximum power point is. And it can give us 278 watts, and we are still pulling 88 watts from the grid to power the load. Well, the orientation is perfect of these cells. Here, uh, 29 volts of volt maximum power point, 29. This one has similar, so it should be around 60 volts maximum power point. But the inverter pulls it down to uh, ah, around 60. Yeah, it is around 60. Okay. Well, I'm not sure why we don't get more out of it. That's 200, 400 watts. 440 watts all in total. And we are getting only 270. Well, this is a camera swap. Well, this is the AC side. Yes, of convert there's conversion loss, of course, in here. And well, I'm not sure how good the MPPT is, but it should be around 60 volt now, and it's only at 50 volts. So may not be the best MPPT controller in there, but this is just my first impression. Okay, let's turn off this noisy thing here. And now we are pushing energy back into the grid. And now it regulates itself. It should be picking up the power used inside the house, which is not much. 34 watts only. Okay, let's turn on the lights at the house. And they should be connected. Here we can see the power is now increasing. <laughs> That's not enough. That is not enough. What about the 
Ah, front rounder light. There's a bit more power. 42 watts. And now it's increasing. Yeah, and now we can see 76 watts being produced by the inverter to compensate for all the power used in the house. 4 watts being still pulled from the grid. And this is directly from solar panels. No batteries connected, nothing. Positive, negative going directly into the inverter. So there you have it. It's another solution as well. If you don't have batteries, you can still use this inverter here and some solar panels. Put them out on your balcony rail if you are living in an apartment and connect them to the solar inverter here. Plug this into a power point on your balcony and you're feeding power back into your apartment grid. That's how easy it is. I'm still a bit disappointed that we don't get the full power out of these cells here, or these panels, because they should produce 200 watts each easily. I can see it when I plug in the Pluetti to the Canadian solar panel here. Works just fine. And this one is tested here on full capacity, full power as well with the solar tester. And of course now that I have disabled the limitation, the power limitation, which was set to 180 watts before, uh, we can see the turn off voltage is now being disabled because, well, there is solar connected, there is no minimum voltage. We will have the shading coming into the solar panel. I think it's already on the panel a little bit. So we should see the power going down actually. See the voltage going up and down. It's tracking the power point and see where the maximum is. It can get 57 we can see and then it goes down to 40, 50, 59. So it's 160 watts. And if we give it a few minutes we will should see this tapering down now because of the shading. Yeah, we already have shading on the panel. There on the right hand side you can see it from the tree. Yep, that is shaded. Yeah, we can see it here. Only 97, 90 watts produced. Wow, that goes down quickly. And the rest, of course, is coming from the grid. So 315 watts from the grid and 80 watts from our solar panels. There's only a tiny shade on there. And this affects the whole string. Let's see, we should see more power now, 190, 266, and it's only 50 volts, 266, still 109 coming from the grid, not sure why, well, on the other hand, I've never cleaned this panel here, and we have some serious dirt and blindness here on this side which covers part of the panels and some moss here as well which is not good I should probably clean this panel here and repeat the test, hey? Okay, I scrapped off all this dirt there's still some there, this is brown I hope this is not underneath Nah, you can't scrape it off it, it comes off with a fingernail I just need to have some scraper or something to get this off correctly Okay, turn on this piggy again and see how much we actually get now from these two solar panels. Ah, pretty much the same, uh, 290, a little bit more because I cleaned it. It's a 215 and a 220 watt panel. So it should be close to 400, 350 watts. I think there's shade. There's shade on this panel. What the f... I could, I could move them further back, but you know... Seven meters... Seven meters is not long enough. 278, 279... Still 80, 80 watts from the grid. <sighs> yeah, not sure what that is. Okay, I'm just turning off the internal limiter. Uh, make yes red. Okay. And we go back, so we let it produce as much power as it wants and we don't have to use Miss Piggy. It's um, 
pushing energy back to the grid now but just for a short moment just want to see how much we actually get should be the same as before 280 to 90 watts yeah that's all that's all we get out of two 220 watt panels it's um 33 volts open voltage open circuit voltage that's not much b36 here okay maybe it's not orientated correctly it should okay let's do the auto mppt testing and see what we get 139 watts only Maybe this panel is not okay, 129. That is not much. I thought I've tested them all. Maybe I haven't with this one because this one was still dirty. 3.4 hundred watts only, 3.6 amps, 94 watts. It's going down quickly. <laughs> because we've got some f***ing shading on there. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I think we are in full sunshine again. I'm not sure this is very close to the shading. 132, we get max. Okay, 142, I really pulled it back now onto the lawn here. There's no shading at all. 142 watts. 6.3 amps. And we should have... 7.1 in the maximum power point and we are getting six and a half so that's pretty good actually 140 watts but the voltage look at this 22 volts only that is far too low that should be 30 volts in the maximum power point 30 volts so 140 watts let's see how much power we get here per square meter 1100 watts per square meter so this is more than standard test conditions but of course the um, the panel is hot now so we are not getting full power but still the voltage is very low 21 only okay let's measure the other panel and see how this goes okay we are now plugged into the Canadian solar we're getting 32 volts open voltage open circuit voltage and we go into auto mode Hundred sixty. Hundred sixty watts. Let's do the spat again. Tiny bit this way, but not much. It's hundred sixty watts. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing in the um, blue eddy as well. Hundred sixty watts. So it's hundred sixty plus hundred forty from this one here makes three hundred. That's what the inverter showed, right? close to 300 watts 280 we have seen 285 a little bit of loss this is DC and then the inverter shows AC conversion losses all right then I would say the inverter works this is all the panels are being able to produce at the moment well they are hot we are getting 1130 watt per square meter what are you up to hey mr. Dave Hey, Betty. Hey, ponies. Having a lovely sunny Sunday afternoon. All right, you have a great afternoon. See you, Dave. Oh, it is warm outside. They promised us 30 degrees today, and I think we've got this. I start sweating. I need to go to the fridge and calibrate some spats. I'm not sure if the spat is correct in calibrating these panels here. There may be some issues with this. I need to make sure they are good calibrated, freshly calibrated. And the can needs to be cold for that. Did you know that? You can never calibrate a warm spat. Only works with ice cold spats. All right, guys, so far this video from today, I think we have tested so far everything with the Sun Crit inverter, 2000 watts here, to connect it directly to the solar panels. And pretty much it works exactly the same as you would connect it to a battery. Just the battery lasts longer and provides you also power during the night. 
All right, guys, then thank you very much for watching again. Thanks for all your support here on the channel, of course. Thanks for all your beer donations, all your emails, all your letters, all your postcards, all your phone calls. I haven't had a WhatsApp yet. No, don't. Thanks for these six people who have used my Tesla referral code this month. And of course, a very special thank to all these wonderful people out there who have donated money towards the channel here to keep this show going. Thank you to all my SPAT or beer donors. Someone recently asked what SPAT stands for. SPAT is the short for Solar Panel Alignment Tool. Well, and you stay charged and safe, and we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon. I've got more battery testing here. I've got more results for you. I will show them in the next video, and and then we need to and then we need to start finally working on this shelf here. I haven't done any work so far. I'm ordering material. I think I've got everything here now to get started, but I'm just I don't know where. It is so much work. I don't know where to start. Also, I haven't done anything with these batteries. They are sitting in parallel for the last. Pretty much since I got them for the last three weeks or so. This will all become in the future videos. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.